Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the hook pinion gear in this Elna Lotus machine. So th this will be covering the Elna Lotus model specifically for the hook pinion gear but there's many many different types of Elna Lotus as well so it doesn't necessarily have to be an SP um, but th this video will apply to many different models the likes of the electronic versions, the TSP, um, there, there are other models as well uh, because Elna didn't really change the hook pinion gear. I think the very early ones are different to this, but they changed the hook pinion gear quite early on. Uh, you know, so this covers a, quite a range of different models. One of the symptoms of a broken hook pinion gear is that the machine won't pick up the bobbin thread when you turn it one full revolution. So you know the top thread should pick up that bobbin thread. But you can see there that the bobbin thread is just still sitting out here so should pick it up and pull it up through the throat plate hole there but there are some other causes of this problem so sort of before delving into um, you know hook pinion gears and, and things like that take a look at my previous video I'll link up a uh, card up here and that goes through some basic troubleshooting procedures for um, you know this problem where a machine doesn't pick up the bobbin thread and keep an eye out for another video, I've got a couple of other little suggestions as well on that subject. But in this case, if you've um, seen the previous video, you will you would have seen that the we've identified that the hook pinion gear is broken in this machine. But I'll just quickly show you how to diagnose this properly. Now we're looking at the rear of the machine. So I've still got the needle threaded, bobbin threaded here. I'll remove this plate here just so you can see a bit better there. So when diagnosing this problem here, um, just looking from the sort of rear quarter of the machine, you'll see I've the needle here. I'm, so I'm turning the hand wheel in operating direction here. So you'll see the, the needle moving and the hook is also moving here. And the reason f that the hook is still moving is because part of the gear is still intact. There's only one portion of the gear that's broken. You could take a look in here and see that the hook's moving, but in fact, although it's moving, it's only moving when the gears are meshed and when it gets to an area where the gear's broken, you will see that the hook momentarily stops to drive there. There's a big patch there. The hook has picked up. Uh, the gear is picked up again there, so we're turning, and if I just hold back slightly on the hook, there, there's a patch, so I'm moving the needle, I'm just jiggling the hand wheel back and forward, you can see the needle going up and down there, but as I do that you can see the hook's not turning, so there's a patch of teeth missing there. I go a little bit further, still the same, and then go further, and it's, it's picked up on the uh, intact teeth there, and has remeshed, but of course it'll be out of time. So there may be a time, just by fluke, that the, the gears mesh in the correct place, and that uh, temporarily puts the timing back into order, and you can have a situation where the machine will pick up the thread, and if we have a look here, I think it may do. No, it missed that time. So I'm just sort of trying to fluke this into picking the thread up. There it goes. There, it's picked the thread up that time. So, you know, if by fluke the thread was picked up because the gear's meshed in the correct place, you might think, um, you know, that you don't have a problem with this, this gear at all. But the, the proper test is to hold back on the hook here. So you need to go right around one full revolution checking this. There it's picked up again, just fluke again, and there, there's a portion where the hook's not going back and forward. So now you know you've definitely got a problem. So let's get into the machine and have a look at replacing the hook pinion gear. Just to make things a little bit easier, um, it's quite handy to remove these covers, these flaps here, when you're working on these machines. These can sort of get in the way. So we'll, we'll start by doing that. And if we have a look 
on the end here we've got two Phillips screws but before we do that we can actually remove the rear cover just by undoing the latch slide the whole flap to the right this is looking at the rear of the machine just be careful there's a little washer right on the end here just be careful not to lose that so that's the rear flap and if we come around the front we can do the same thing on the front there actually now the, uh, the whole side flap has come off here and again there's a small washer on this end here and one on this end so left and right washers there just be careful with those and now we can get access just a nice easy access to the machine so if we just tip it onto its back there and we've got four straight head screws just to get the bottom off here and if we have a look down at the pinion gear here we can see it's pretty nasty looking there's bits of uh, plastic gear teeth floating around in here turn the machine over you can see here that part of the gear is still intact we've got a tooth missing there and then a whole chunk missing out here so that's the cause of the problem where the uh, machine's going out of time so when the opposing gear which is on this shaft here vertical shaft here reaches this point here that's when the hook stops turning and as you turn the machine further it remeshes the gears and takes takes the hook around again so we need to work on getting this this gear off the shaft here and once we do that we can get the new gear on and then worry about um, timing and things like that once that's done I removed this gear from a later model Lotus this is from the SP electronic machine and this gear looks in good condition so I'll use this one on this machine to get it back up and running you can see that um, the gears are a different colour uh, the originals a sort of a charcoaly color and this is a uh, lighter type material whether they changed the composition or not I don't know whether it's just a different color I'm not sure but anyway let's um, get this out so the first thing to do is we're going to need to get this gear here off the shaft just while I'm at it I'll uh, go ahead and remove the presser foot and the needle the plates now when the needle bars at its lowest position here what we call bottom dead center the feed dog there's a feed dog cam here uh, the feed dog is at its lowest position as well and the fact this is the bottom side of the feed dog if we have a look at the top here this is the feed dog here it's at its lowest position and the height is driven by this cam here I might just put a mark on that cam just as a reference just to make it easier for repositioning because that, that can be put in um, 180 degrees out so I'll just get my marker here and we'll put a, a mark there so I've marked the position there when the needle's at the bottom dead centre just as a reference you'll see a collar on the right hand side of the shaft here that needs to be loosened and if, if you can't see the grub screw just turn the machine until you see the grub screw there and we've got a two millimeter 
Allen key here. Just loosen the grub screw and that should just slide nicely along the shaft there. I've seen those bind onto the shaft uh, so even after loosening that grub screw this collar here may not move so I normally just get a little bit of penetrating oil onto it CRC or WD-40 yeah give it a bit of gentle persuasion with a, a pair of pliers or something just to loosen that up now on the left hand side here we've got the hook pinion gear so this is the, the culprit here so now just go ahead and undo the grub screws there's two grub screws to loosen there like that and then you can just move the hook pinion off there so now this whole shaft should move now be careful when you're moving it if we have a close look down in here you'll see if if the pulley moves away from this cam here you'll see there's a little pin shaft down in here and you don't really want that coming out because then you have to locate you can see there that it's actually come out so now you know this this can uh, get out of time here get out of whack you know that there's only there's there's a hole there for it to go in it can only go one way so it's pretty easy to put back in if it does go awry but um, just to save you the hassle just make sure that that pulley there doesn't move so what you want to do is you want to hold the pulley to the left and stop it from coming to the right as you push the shaft through but you'll see the problem we've got here is that the shaft we're not going to be able to get the shaft far enough to the right so I'm right up against the side of the machine here see this side here I've pushed the shaft to as far as it'll go if we have a look here see I don't think there's enough room in here for this gear to come off the shaft so we'll need to remove the, the side panel here that's these four posi drive screws and we'll take the hand wheel that's a standard Phillips that end screw off the top shaft there now that we've got the screws out of here I actually think that you might be able to get away with just you know moving this side panel here just to the right a little bit just to give us enough room we really just want enough room to be able to move this shaft just a little bit further Oops. so now we might just about have enough space to get this gear off yep here we go it's dropped off there so I've actually managed to get away with just not even removing entirely removing this whole panel although everything's loose you want to have the hand wheel loose just to give it a little bit of uh, room to move there we have actually been able to get this gear off and here's the culprit and you can see the nasty nastiness of the broken gear teeth there there's a bit of a chunk missing there but that's what it should look like that area there yeah, looking pretty chewed up and this is the replacement I've got this is out of a later model this is out of a an SP but it's an the electronic version so a slightly later model you can see the difference in the color of the gears so they must have changed maybe the composition I'm not sure but I've I've not seen the these seem to be more robust made out of a more robust material I've not really seen these strip all that much whereas these black ones here maybe these are a little bit more brittle than these white ones here not sure but anyway let's get this one back on the shaft here it's just a matter of placing the gear back in so that we can push the shaft to the left like that and we just need to line up the shaft there so that it goes into the bearing there just be a little bit careful too when you're trying to move the shaft to the left 
there's a little cam follower down in here this cam follower here and that catches on the cam here so you have to push that up to allow this cam here to slide across so now we've got the shaft into the bearing there just make sure you have to make sure that this roll pin here I'll get a closer look here for you goes into the little slot on this pulley here so you can see the when I turn the shaft the roll pin goes into this little slot here like that just drops in okay once that's in there securely we just bring the collar up here but there's actually a clearance for the collar the specification for that clearance is point zero five of a millimeter and I've, I've got a feeler gauge here and it's point zero five one or two thousandths of an inch and that you put your little feeler gauge I wouldn't worry too much if you don't have a feeler gauge um, but just make sure when you do this that the shaft is being held to the left so I'm pulling the shaft to the left here and at the same time with the feeler gauge in there I'm pushing the collar up to the feeler gauge and then just carefully without moving things too much I'm just keeping a little bit of pressure on there while I'm tightening the allen key and that gives us our end play clearance now if you don't have feeler gauges I wouldn't worry too much about it but make sure that you leave just a very slight amount of clearance and the next thing to do is to get this uh, feed cam timed properly so we put the mark on here so that we can position the roll pin here into the slot when the needle bar is at its lowest point so I'll set the needle bar to its lowest point so that's the needle bar at its lowest point there and if we turn this so that we can see the mark again the the little cam follower can interfere a little bit here so I'm just pushing the cam follower up off the cam there and that should just slot into position like that that's the cam that causes the uh, the rising and the falling of the feed dog so now it's just a matter of bringing the gear back up this is the hook pinion gear here back into position and we can get the end screw back on for the hand wheel like so and while we're there we might as well get these end screws back in I'm going to do a video on the uh, this switch here it's, it's, you know I seem to get a few questions about the bobbin winders on these machines and um, it's all related to this switch here so keep an eye out for a, another video on that right that's all done up there and then now what we have to do is we have to do the hook timing so I've just slipped the gear on loosely there to mesh up with the hook make sure you've got your zigzag setting on zero you don't want the machine zigzagging and needle position left and right is totally out of the question just on zero is fine you don't need to do this you don't need to remove the feed dogs but I, I'm just doing so to make it a little bit easier to see with the uh, camera in there Okay, that's the feed dogs removed there. Of course, while I'm in here, I'll um, I'll clean the machine as well. Here we have the the hook here. Let's get a brand new needle in here. You always start with a brand new needle when you're doing any sort of work like this. You'll also need that to be in um, straight stitch mode when you're doing this because you'll be turning the machine by hand. So the key to hook timing is when you're turning the machine you'll see the needle this is an operating direction always turn the machine in operating direction we haven't the the hooks not driving at the moment because I haven't got the gear tightened on the shaft the needle comes down with its thread and when it rises a certain amount it's called the needle rise a little loop forms at the back of the needle and that's at that time just roughly here at this stage 
you'll be able to see the point of the hook coming around here. I'm just pushing it around by hand. And what happens as the needle's rising and forming the loop at the back, this hook comes around and picks that thread up off the needle and continues on. So the timing for that is when this needle bar rises 2.45 millimeters from its bottom position, that hook should be directly in behind the center of the needle. The point of the hook should be lining up with the center of the back of that needle. It's quite it's easier with special tools. This is a needle clamp set and we've got different thicknesses. It's a little bit like a gauge, um, almost like a feeler, a thick feeler gauge really. I've got a gauge here for 2.4. So I think, you know, that's that's close enough, I think. But if you don't have this tool here, the only way really is to somehow um, measure, you know, maybe with some calipers or a ruler even. I mean, I think as long as you get this close, you know, you should be fine. Um, but you need to judge when this needle bar has risen 2.45 millimeters. And you, yeah, you could probably do it somehow with a, as say with a ruler or calipers or you know contrive something to to allow you to do this but um, the easy way is with these these tools here. So just coming in at a different angle here I've got the machine lying on its back here. You bring your needle bar to the bottom of its travel and if you happen to have these clamps you put the gauge onto the needle bar there so that it butts up against the lower bush and then you clamp you put your clamp on and tighten the clamp onto the needle bar just gently and then when you remove this gauge you know that the distance between the clamp and the lower end of the bushing there is 2.4 millimeters so when you turn the machine in operating direction just to close the gap up you know that the needle bar has risen 2.4 millimeters and then without moving anything we bring the hook point which you can see around here we bring that around until it's just behind the needle there the point of the hook should line up with the center of the needle so once we have that lined up there we tip the machine back we can, without moving anything, bring the hook gear in uh, to mesh with the hook gear and just making sure that the hook gear is pushed right up against this cam here and then we just nip up one of the grub screws here and then we go back and check our work just to make sure that nothing moved so our clamp is still there. I'll just um, reverse the machine up and make sure that clamp hasn't slipped. So, so we're just double checking the work really. Yep, it's still 2.4 millimeters distance there. I'll just bring that back up. And by rights, the needle, uh, sorry, the hook point should be behind the needle. And we can see there that it's not quite. So I just need to bring that timing, I just need to advance that hook timing slightly. So that might actually be easier if I just undo the screw here. And then I can I can actually see up through here where the hook point is. I'll bring that up. Like that. Just nip that up again. And then I'll just back the machine off and come back to the clamp position. So now I'll just reverse the machine a little bit, bring it back to the clamp. And it's still not quite there, although there's a little bit of slack in the system. A little bit of slack between those two gears meshing. Uh, so I think... Yeah, I might just bring that up a little bit because the, the slack will be taken out 
uh, so the hook will be pushing back in this direction here. So I might just bring that up. It's just a little bit of fine tuning to be done here. Just another look there. Yep, that's looking good there. Okay, and there we have the feed and hook timing done. Just a little bit of oil there. I won't go and oil the entire machine at this stage. So now we should be ready just to remove that needle bar clamp there. Let's give those feed dogs a bit of a clean there. If you do take the feed dogs out, you will need to realign them. And you do that by just loosely tightening these screws. You want them tight enough so that they are uh, so that the feed dog doesn't slip around too much but you want them loose enough to be able to position the feed dog while you've got the plate on just to align the teeth and the holes just allows you to position the feed dogs to make them parallel with the holes there it could be just a slight smidge tighter there and then put your plate on and go ahead and line up the feed dogs there doing this through the viewfinder so that, that looks okay and then we just take the plate off and then just nip up these screws here That. Put the slide plate back on. That just um, you just twist that plate, and there's there's little spring clips under here. So if you go in on an angle and then just turn it, it'll slide onto its posi there. that back on, put the presser foot on that the bobbin in there I'll just put the base on for uh, testing you'll also notice on the base there's a little cut out so you can see the serial number that's stamped onto the chassis there I want to thought of everything eh Elna's owned by Janome now. Yes, and certainly Elna's uh, not made in not made in Switzerland any longer. Those days are long gone. Sort of makes me wonder if we'll ever go back to making these ultra high quality machines. I think if we do, we need to get the Swiss involved again and the French. They make really good stuff. Germans, Americans, all make really good quality stuff. In fact, the, um, I'm very impressed with some of the things coming out of China as well. That quality is is uh, really good. Uh, but you know, you you get what you pay for these days, I guess. And um, some of the modern machines are made down to a price, and you know, you can't really blame manufacturers for doing that. They're just sort of competing in the market, really. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, there's enough pressure to get back to uh, making high quality machines made to last like this. Because I mean, really, why would you want anything else in a sewing machine? I mean in a basic sewing machine. I know there's plenty of other uh, functions that can be achieved with a machine. Um, but for a basic machine, I see no reason why they can't just make a machine like this, make it really well, uh, make make all the parts, you know, that are potential failure points available, make them easy to service and maintain, and you'll have a machine that just lasts for generations, absolute decades, just like these are. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we ever get back to that. Anyway, that's my rant over. <laughs> Let's... Um, plug this in and see how we go. 
Oh, by the way, um, while I, you know, if I was doing this job while I was in there, I'd definitely be checking those motor brushes. We're in stitching position here. Let's quickly thread this up. Nice and easy to thread these machines. Actually, this is one of the very first sewing machines I ever saw. This was this model because my mother had one. She actually upgraded to a Janome Combi. That's the one with the sewing machine on one end and the overlocker, two thread overlocker on the other end. And so she went from this little uh, lightweight machine to an absolute tank of a machine. It's a huge, heavy thing. But um, they're, they're really good, the uh, Janome Combis. Okay, picking up bobbin thread, that's a good start. And it wasn't a fluke that time. Just tentatively uh, start here. I'll start by turning by hand. I, you know, would always do that after a major job like this. So we're on the longest stitch length. Everything seems in order. Nothing's jamming. Feed timing is fine. Let's go. What a nice smooth sounding machine. Let's let's do uh, zigzag because that's a a pretty good test. The widest, I'll just set the widest zigzag there. Yeah, a little bit of a rumble. Um, that might be that motor pulley getting a little bit uh, a little bit worn there. Looking good. Tension's not right, but um, I'm not going to worry about that at this stage. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, a lower tension is probably a little bit tight. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that for another video though. Tensions is a whole other ball game. Now, putting the covers back on is just a matter of re-identifying the front and back panels. Now, the back panel has this little slot here for the the uh, handle to drop down into. So that's our back panel. Front panel is got a solid top on this model anyway and just making sure the little washers are still there so you just go ahead and put the shaft into the little hole there one side that's the right hand side and then you can actually clip that up just to keep it in position there turn the machine around just put the handle up there same scenario with the rear cover and flicks in like that and then you can easily put the end cover on and that's just a matter of lining these holes here either side up with the pins on either side here just clip that in there both sides and then we just go ahead and install the screws just like that yeah, I, uh, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.